Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more human resource machine. Our next level is 34, the Vowel Incinerator. This one, um, it's not really all that hard of a puzzle in my opinion. So basically all you have to do is um, take a number and take a number from the, take an, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. take an input and output it as long as it's not a vowel. So basically you have to check each thing against all the five vowels in English and then if it's one of them you throw it out, otherwise you stick it in the outbox. So there's like a cheap way to do this in a quote unquote proper way. The cheap way is just to like manually check it against each of these five vowels and then output it if it's none of them. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the quote unquote proper solution that involves, um, you know, arrays and zero terminated strings and all this programmer stuff. Uh, it seems to be what the designers intended because it produces a solution that exactly matches the size and speed optimization requirements. Basically, we're gonna take this floor and treat it like a zero terminated string. We're gonna go ahead and have a spot where we keep the input, it's the next thing that we were given, and a spot where we keep track of the address. This is the current address that we're looking at. And then this zero, we don't actually wanna change this field because that's how we're gonna know that we're done checking everything, or checking our input against everything on the floor. So we have to start by copying this zero I'll just go ahead and label zero for clarity and copy it to the address because we're always going to start checking, you know, at the A and then go to the E, then the I, the O, the U, and then once we hit the zero, we're going to know that we're done. So once we've got this initial setup taken care of, we take a value from the input or from the inbox, we copy it to our input, then we copy from whatever the current address is. Notice this is an indirect thing, so I'm not copying a zero here. The first time I'm going to be copying an A. And if I copy from the current address and it's a zero, that basically means that I'm done because it means I've, I've already finished checking the A, the E, I, O, U, and I got here. And that means I didn't find any match against any of my vowels, so my input's good. So I simply take my input, outbox it, and go back to the beginning. And it is important to go all the way back to the beginning because I have to reset my address to zero each time. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll start here and then think I'm already done. Um, if, however, it's, you know, not a zero here, um, if I'm not done checking everything, then I actually have to, you know, perform the check to see if it's the same as the current thing. So I subtract the value that I picked up from the address, um, or subtract my input from the value that I picked up at the address, if that's zero, that means that my value is a vowel, so I can just completely forget about it. I can just go back to the beginning, start the process over again, I don't need it anymore. However, if it's not a zero, if, if the value that my input is is not a vowel, um, for the current spot I checked, it might still be one of the subsequent vowels, so I need to bump my address up by one, and then repeat the process starting from here. Basically, I copy whatever's at the new address, if it's zero, that means I'm finished. If it's not zero, I check it against my input. If it's a vowel, then I, if it's a match for that vowel, I don't wanna ever out, output that input, so I go back to the beginning, and otherwise I bump the address and keep checking until I hit zero. So let's go ahead, and if that was confusing, take it step by step. So we start by doing our setup. We take a zero and put it in the address. Let me see if I can just speed her movements up a tad. That's pretty perfect. Then I pick up a W, save it in the input, I read from the address, which is currently zero. It's not zero at the at address. So I subtract the A from W. They're not the same letter. So I bump my address up by one and keep checking. Now I'm gonna read the next address. It's an E, I check if my input was an E, my input's not an E, so I bump the address. I check if my input was an I, it's not. So I bump the address. I check if my input was an O, it isn't, so I bump the address. I check if my input is a U, it's not, so I bump the address. And now I'm gonna pick up a zero. So this is, like I said, a zero terminated string. Zero is a special character that tells you when you're at the end of the string. And because it is zero, that means I've checked, you know, all five vowels, and you can confirm this. You've seen my lady here with the poofy gray hair, check against all five vowels and not find a match, which means my input must be just dandy. So I pick up my input, outbox it, and away we go. Now the next one is boring because it's also a, con a consonant, so nothing really to see here. Let's just go ahead and uh, skip through that. The next one here is an O. So I pick up an O, save it as my input. Is it an A? Nope. 
Is it an E? Nope. Is it an I? Nope. Is it an O? Aha, so I do O minus O, I get zero. So yes, my thing is an O. That means I can just stop here. I, I'm never gonna need to submit that input. So I just go back to the beginning. Um, I take an O, or I take a zero, put it in the address, and then happily move on with my life. So that should work. Let's go ahead and just skip through everything else. Any tool? It's kind of a weird phrase. Now, as you can see, this takes some um, quite a bit of steps because of all the jumping. So if you were to just manually compare it to the A, then to the E, then to the I, then to the O, then to the U, you'd have a lot more lines of code, but it would complete much more quickly. So I think this is a pretty easy puzzle because at least the speed optimization is extremely easy to achieve. But even this, you know, quote unquote, proper solution isn't that hard either. Anyway, not, not a very difficult puzzle, but the next one is really difficult. And I'm gonna confess to you here, I actually never solved this puzzle. Um, I, I never figured it out. I, I mean, I, I got it. I was able to do a solution, but I could not get either of the optimizations. Um, so I actually went online and found it. So this is, uh, I'm gonna be completely transparent, not a solution that I had devised. And I, I honestly had to work hard to even frickin' understand this solution. Like, I, I just didn't even understand how it worked when I saw it. Um, but hopefully, you know, you'll pardon my ineptitude and inability to solve these puzzles. Uh, because you'll see just, like, how clever people can get with this game. Um, so here we have 17 or fewer commands and 167 or fewer steps, and somebody found a solution that actually satisfies both of those optimizations. Um, I actually had a, a bevy of solutions to choose from on this one. There were people who, like, went crazy with the size, um, but it had a lot of steps, and there were people who went crazy and, like, found really fast ways of doing it, but it had, like, a lot of lines of code. So I just picked one that beat both in the same one, but, like, technically this isn't, like, the best solution um, for either of the possible optimizations. Anyway, so, I'm gonna do my best to explain the solution, but please keep in mind, I didn't make this up. Like, this is just, some, someone's a freaking genius. Basically, the, the, oh yeah, let me say what the puzzle is. The, the puzzle is that, it, it seems really simple, you just, um, take the value, and as long as it's a new value, you output it. But if you've ever seen it before, then you don't output it. And so it's one of those things that seems really easy, like, okay, well, you just, you know, you just copy it down, if it's new, and then you output it. But if it's not new, you know, you basically have to start each time by like checking against all your old values, then you don't output it. But it's, you know, kind of tricky to do that. And when I solved this puzzle, I basically made it so that like, like the beginning would be a zero. And then once I found a new value, I would like, you know, move the zero over and write my new value down. And then once I found a new value, I'd move the zero over and write my new value down and so on. So I would always just like, you know, check until I found a zero, then I'd know that I was at the end of my string and then I would out output the value. And I'd have like, a, I had like an input variable here. So I'd basically take a new value, save it as the input, check against all my old values. If I found a match, I'd be like, forget it and then move on. And then if I did find one that like didn't match against anything, so I actually hit the zero, I would delete the zero from there, move it forward a step, and then keep, you know, this kind of up-to-date zero terminated string going on. Um, and this value here, this was like my, you know, address that I was using. Um, but someone came up with a much more clever algorithm. Basically, my algorithm is not optimal. It seems like it's pretty logical, and like, how could you really do better than that? Well, you actually can. So, let me show you the algorithm that an internet stranger came up with, which, let me be clear, like, I had to, like, analyze this for a long time before I even figured out what it was. Like, this was with the solution staring me in the face. Basically, the, al the algorithm this guy uses um, is, and I, you know, I really should have looked up what his name was. I'm sorry. Um, I should, basically, if you do a Google search for Digit Exploder, you'll be able to find a Steam forum that, that has this. I should have looked up the person's name so I can give him credit in the video, and I apologize for not doing that. I will um, look it up after I am done recording and post it in my information. But anyway, um, the algorithm this person uses is as follows. Um, I'm just going to have like a, a string to start with. Basically, what this person does is we're going to take our next value, and we're just going to write it at the end of the, of the string. We're just going to assume that like it's new. And then after we write it down, we're gonna check it against all of the old values. And if we find no matches, then we're like, yep, that was a legit new value. We're gonna output it. 
we're gonna make it a permanent part of our thing, and then we're gonna like in, you know increase the address of the the new slot. So if you put in a new value, you know that isn't actually new, then when you start to check against your old values, you're gonna be like, oh, there's actually a match here. So you're just gonna delete it and then put the next value in. So it's kind of a clever algorithm, and I know it seems obvious, like God bored, how'd you not find this? It's like so simple, but you know it's. One of those things where it's really easy once you see it, but it's hard to come up with this shit. So anyway, the point is, um, you're just always assuming that your uh, that the thing that you just picked up from the inbox is in fact new, and you're just plonking it in there. Then, if you check and find out it's not really new, you just overwrite it with whatever your next value is. Until you find an actual legit new one, then you make it permanent and you increase your slots. This way, you don't have to use a... Um, zero terminated you don't have to have a zero anywhere you don't have to have like a zero terminated string you can just have really only two variables um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this actually um, the newest I'm gonna, I'm gonna spell out the whole word because I think this is kind of such a complicated algorithm and like a complicated program too because the, the way it's coded even with the algorithm is also incredibly tricky uh, this is gonna be our newest um, letter um, and it's an address so I, I don't have the space to write that in but this is this is the address of the newest letter and then this thing right here this is going to be the address of the current letter that we're looking at so of these two variables the newest is going to be relatively fixed it's pretty much always going to be at whatever the newest place was whereas the current is going to be sliding down all the time because basically like let's say that the newest is four current will start at three and then we're gonna slide current all the way down because we're gonna have to check all of these to see if any of these are the same as what we think optimistically is the newest letter so um, the way this works is as follows we're gonna take a value from the inbox and we're just gonna copy it to the newest location it's important to do this indirectly so like we're gonna take this a and we're just gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you whatever so we take this a and we're just gonna put it there because you know it's the first letter so clearly it's the newest clearly there's nothing that's ever been like it before and then we're simply going to outbox it after copying it because, I mean, it's definitely a new value. There's, there's no way it could possibly be a repeat. Once we submit something to the outbox, we need to bump up the newest value. And this, this makes sense, right? Because, like, if, if I put an A here, then 0 is no longer the address of the newest letter. The, the address of the newest letter is going to be 1. So I have to bump up the newest. And then I'm going to copy this value to the current and I'm gonna bump the current down by one. The reason for this is that, let's say like, if one is where I am gonna put the newest letter, then I don't ever wanna check it against the newest address, cause then I'm gonna get a match and that would be stupid. I need to check against the previous address and all the addresses below that. So like if four is where I'm putting the newest letter, then I'm gonna check it against the letters in three, two, one, and zero, not against four, cause that's where the letter itself is. So current always starts at one below newest and the way that we're going to know we're done checking this is again very clever is instead of starting at zero and checking up until we hit some kind of limit we're going to start at whatever the you know the closest thing to the newest is and then go down until we get to zero we're going to know that we're done checking when we get a uh, negative value for our current address that's how we're going to know that we have already checked everything that was there Okay, so after we've got the setup where we have the newest and the current at the right values, we take a value from the inbox, and like I said, we're just going to copy it sort of optimistically to the newest location. I'm just assuming here this value is legit. Now I'm actually going to check to see if it's legit. So I'm going to subtract whatever is at the current location, which again starts out one below the newest. And if it's a match, that means I have seen this value before. So I can go back here. Um, I'm sorry, I, I put this in the wrong place. I need that's that's what I'm gonna do later. I need to actually go back uh, here, and I need to basically set things up to be, get ready to take the next value from the inbox. So to do this, I'm actually gonna put in a step that again, this is kind of genius. I would never have come up with this, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually put this um, value here. Uh, this this or sorry, this instruction here of um, copy from newest and I'm gonna actually put this here yeah like this so th this may seem kind of redundant because when you bump the newest remember the bump command puts the value into your hand so I'm already gonna be holding the newest value so there would have been no reason to think to write copy from newest here 
um, because I was, I was already holding it. But basically, later on, this is going to be a helpful thing to have because if I subtract my newest value from a value somewhere in my previous list of stored values and I get a match, in other words, you subtract one thing from another and if you get zero, that means that it's the same. I go back here and I want to basically take a value, the next value from the inbox because the one I'm holding is one that I'm going to throw away. But I need to get my shit together. I need to take whatever the newest value is, I need to copy it to the current, and I need to bump the current down by one. Because let's say that my newest value was at four and I found a match at one, I need to make sure that my current get re gets reset to three before I take the next value from the inbox and repeat the checking process. So this is why we have to add the copy from newest here. It wasn't necessary our first time through, but every subsequent time through, we need to make sure that whatever we're holding in our hands is in fact the address of the newest value, so we can copy it to the current value and make it one less. <sighs> okay! So, if the value is not zero, when we subtract our newest value from one of our previous values, then what we need to do here, of course, is bump the current back down by one. And now we do a check. If it's negative, that means we've actually finished checking everything. So we can, we're ready to basically outbox our value. We copy from whatever the newest address was. This is where we stored our, our new value. And then we outbox it, and then we repeat the process that we, that we did from the beginning. And this is another place where there's two seemingly redundant lines of code. We just copy to newest and copy from it. Well, the first time through, we're already holding the newest value, but every subsequent time through, we need to, you know, recopy it, because who knows what the hell we were holding. We were holding, like, a negative one. So, um, if it's negative, that means we've checked everything and didn't find a match, so we can outbox it. However, if it is not negative, that means that we have to keep checking. So we just uh, copy from the newest location, and we jump back here. So we subtract whatever's the current value. If it's zero, then we found a match, so we need to throw it out. If it's not zero, we bumped in the we bump the current down until we find uh, until we get to negative one. So uh, let's let's go ahead and see this thing in action. We'll kind of fast forward it a little bit. So I take a D. It's my first value, so it's good. Save it. Then I copy it. That seems redundant. So notice here I was already holding a D, and then I just picked up the D again. So that's redundant for the first value, but it ends up being relevant later. And then we outbox it because it's legit. Then we bump the newest up by one because one is where I'm going to be putting my next value. So I copy from the newest, again, it looks redundant here, but it's going to be relevant later. I copy it to current, then decrease current by 1. So I'm going to put my new value at 1, but I'm going to check it against the value at 0. So I pick up a D, I'm assuming this is a new value. Oh, how hilariously am I mistaken. Then I save it. After I save it, I check. Is it really my uh, fresh value? Well, let's subtract whatever's in the current. Oh, it's 0. Okay, so that, that D was actually not legit at all. So I need to just go back and repeat the process. I set my uh, current value as the newest value minus one. And you might say, well, Boris, this was already zero. Why are we doing this? Well, we'll see later on why it's important to kind of repeat these steps. So I take a new number from the inbox. I copy it to the newest value. I subtract whatever's in the current place. It's different. So I bump the current by down by one. And hey, it's negative. That means actually there are no Cs anywhere in my list. So I copy the newest value, outbox it, bump my newest up by one. And you can see here, this is why I need to update the current. Otherwise, it would just be stuck at negative one. So it wouldn't be ready at all for my next value. So I copy from the newest, stick it in the current, and then we pick up our next value, which is an A. So here we uh, have an A. We check it against the C. It's not a match. So we bump the current down by one. We pick up an A. We check it against the D. It's not a match. All right, so that means the A is legit because we've checked everything. So I take my A, put it in the outbox, bump the newest, and then copy to the current and subtract the current by one. Let me take a new value from the inbox, and you kind of see where this is going. So the E, we're actually not going to find any matches at all. So we outbox it, pick up a newest, and then, you know, repeat the thing. The B is actually also new. I don't know if I've ever seen this with five unique values. So let's just fast forward that a smidge. Now I do want to show you what happens if you find something that's a match. So, okay, we've done all this. Now we take an A. And we assume it's our new value. We subtract it from the B, not a match, so we bump the current down by one. Take an A. It's not a match, so we bump it down by one. Pick up an A. Oh my god, we've actually seen that A before. So we jump here. And this, by the way, you might have been wondering why we need this line, because it seems like, you know, after we bump the newest, we've already we're already holding it. Well, we need to bump we need to have this redundant seeming line in case we find a match and jump here through that means, because now we have to pick up the five correct the current, 
and take with this. And then all the other ones are gonna be uh, are gonna be matches. So uh, I don't think we have to see anything new here. So yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. I mean, I did not come up with the solution. Again, this was discovered by somebody on the Steam forum. You know what? Let me see if I can just find this. Um, uh, who who was it that did it? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong forum. Well, butts. So anyway, uh, I'll, I'll upload, I'll, I'll update my description after posting this video. But thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please like and or subscribe. And I'll see you again soon with, um, hmm, I think I'm probably going to do maybe these two in the alphabetizer next time. I think that would fit into a video. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you again soon. Take care.